Hello there, good morning to you. This is Kakaki Social. I'm Rena Obozige. Thank you so much for joining us again this good week. Now, a BBC special report on President Muhammadu Buhari, eight years in office, has described both tenors as a legacy of kidnapping, inflation, and debt. Although they say security got better with President Muhammadu Buhari, however, the gains were again eroded by the emergence of equally violent groups in other parts of the country under him as his government ran out of ideas. So part of what they say is that Nigeria's public debts could pass $15, $150 billion this year when he took over office. He stood at a little over 60 billion dollars that's double plus his borrowing spree has drawn warnings from the world bank that africa's largest economy was using 96 percent of its revenue to service debts also it says mr buhari's integrity was also imposed by his frequent medical trips to the uk despite spending large sums of refurbish to refurbish a clinic in the presidential villa also part of it it says that currently one in three nigerians who want to work are unable to find a job before mr buhari took over office that figure was less than one in ten the government has blamed a drastic drop in oil prices in its early days the covid 19 pandemic and Russia's war in Ukraine and finally as a part we are taking it says as he leaves office Mr. Buhari's handling of the Nigerian economy will most likely be remembered for his bust attempt earlier this year at redesigning the local currency that's Naira an otherwise rudimentary exercise descended into chaos as scarcity of the new Naira note which have now almost disappeared resulted in untold hardship for millions in the country who rely on cash for basic needs. Over to some reactions. Now, Obina is saying that what a scorecard for a president and his party, the APC, that promised change and fighting insecurity and corruption, delivered the exact opposite, including enabling rigging of his successor. Isn't it incredible and very unlikely that a party with such record can be re-elected and more reaction from lemon who says legacy of kidnapping inflation debt few subsidies come collapsed naira energized corruption bigotry nepotism hypocrisy fraudulent election disunity ethnic cleansing etc the bar has never been this low in governance in nigeria also reacting to that is deep fake who says despite his shortcomings he still stands among the very best that had the interest of his nation at heart from north to south, east to west, he is the only one that has rejuvenated our infrastructure upon this project. Commerce will thrive, revenue and employment will come. And lastly, reacting to that is Jagaban Olu, who says, The minute you see the name of the author of this article, Unduka Ujomo, you know he would lack truth and objectivity. And to another story, the governor of Zamfara State, Mohamed Matawale, has accused the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission boss, Abdul Rashid Bawa, of demanding $2 million bribe from him to shelf the 70 billionaire corruption allegation against him. In an interview, Matawale said he has receipts of the conversation asking Bauer to consider also investigating the presidency instead of focusing solely on governors. Part of what he said is that it is not just to always blame governors. It is not only governors who have treasury. The federal government also has. What does the EFCC boss do to them? As he is claiming he has evidence on governors, let him also show the world evidence of those at the federal level. He continues to say that if he exits office, that if Bauer leaves office, people will surely know that he is not an honest man. I have evidence against him. Let him vacate office. I am telling you, within 10 seconds, probably more than 200 people will bring evidences of bribe he collected from them. He knows what he requested from me, but I declined. He requested a bribe of $2 million from me, and I have evidence of this. He knows the house we met. He invited me and told me the conditions. He told me governors were going to his office, but I did not. If I don't have evidence, I will not say this. 
well, responding in a series of tweets, the EFCC is also asking Matawale to go ahead and provide the evidence he is claiming to have. And he says if Matawale will be taken seriously, he should go beyond cyber rightling by, by spilling the beans, provide concrete evidence as proof of his allegations. And then he says, but despite the irritation of his phantom claims, the commission will not be drawn into a mud fight with a suspect under its investigation for corruption and unconscionable pillage of the resources of the state. Now over to some reaction to Fiki saying that why is it that it is when law enforcement agents are after them that they suddenly have evidence against the agency? Why didn't he say this before? And is the one asking EFCC to probe Buhari's ministers. Comrade Okeke is saying that, um, but when it comes to all these politicians, tell me how many has the EFCC convicted that are in jail We are really playing in this country. For a governor to accuse the EFCC boss, I believe they have something they are hiding. And also commenting on that is Chijoke Godwin who says, we don't expect the system to come on Twitter to be making case for the boss. If the EFCC must maintain his reputation at this time, the best thing to do is for the chairman to step aside and submit himself for investigation in the face of this serious allegation. And um, Blessed is thinking that everyone must be probed. We don't need or we don't trust any of you. Both Matawale and your chairman should be probed because the level of corruption under this regime is the worst the world has ever seen. Away from that, <laughs> in Congo, the Minister of Primary, Secondary and Technical Education in Congo, Tony Umwaba Kazadi, has impregnated his Deputy Minister, Aminetu Namasha. The two of them are married to separate spouses. <laughs> and the minister says the pregnancy is an accident as that wasn't the plan. According to reports, they de uh, developed feelings for each other as they work together in the Education Ministry of the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. Now, some reactions by Congolese are saying that um, Wow, it's great to see that our government officials are committed to working hard and creating new things at work, like little baby bureaucrat. And also reacting to that is the old father who says, occupational hazard, congratulations to them and their spouses. And Biggie says, oh, it happens. Sometimes you go for a meeting at the boardroom and accidentally fall on each other. Their safety manager should step up and do um, the job well. More reactions from Sweet Angel who says they worked on a project together and got positive report or uh, result. To our final story today, a six-year-old girl in Kano State, Sherifat Usman, is currently fighting for her life at a medical facility after she was badly stabbed in her stomach by a female neighbor who suspected that Fatima's father was advising her husband to get a second wife. Fatima Malam is the woman's name. She's currently nowhere to be found. And her husband is claiming that she is mentally deranged, but the police say that they are on top of the matter. Fatima was said to have gotten a kitchen knife, lured her unsuspecting young victim to an uncompleted building where she stabbed her multiple times without break until she thought the girl was dead. Now, according to passers-by who found Fatima, it was a cry that attracted them to her rescue. And this is what one of the neighbors said. That... On their way to Mariri, Fatima bought a kitchen knife on credit. She took Sherifat to an uncompleted beauty where she stabbed her severely in her stomach without the sole intention or with the sole intention to kill her. Fatima wanted to kill Sherifat vengeance because she felt her, that Sherifat's father, was the one instigating her husband to get a second wife. Fatima has been acting strange in recent times. Sometimes, some weeks back, she brought out a pistol one evening, threatening that she would kill somebody if her husband eventually takes another wife. Well, in a similar development, Chinaza Anemem from Anambra State has also been injured with a knife by someone she calls her auntie. Now, 
according to the report, the man who said, um, who made the video reported that um, inflicted pain is the daily bread of Chinaza in that area. So let's see the video now and then we call it a day on Kakaki Social today. Over your body. What happened to you? My auntie pierced knife for me. Your auntie? Yes. You used what? Knife. To pierce your body? Yes. Is that so? Yes. Can we see the place? No. Wonderful. That is wonderful. What did you do? Because I don't wash bag. She used knife and pierced me. Because you don't wash bag? Yes. She now used knife to pierce your body? Yes. Wow. Uh, as a parent, we may not be able to take care of ourselves uh, or the children that, the, that God has given us. We will not get them out into slavery. You can imagine this girl. This is not the first time I am a concerned neighbor. This girl is subjected to inhuman treatment, child, gross child abuse. Well, that's how we end Kakaki Social this morning. I'll see you again tomorrow, Tuesday. Good morning to you, Unkoli and um, his OJ. Uh, that pathetic uh, story that you ended with, yeah, really. Definitely. I actually wanted to talk about another thing, but that was caught my that, that one caught my attention. Sometimes I wonder why people do this to other people's children. Mm -hmm. What you can't possibly do to your child, no matter what the child has done. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know how that makes you feel, really, when you come across things like this. Well, it's definitely sad. I I think that. The last one, or the first one actually, the one in Kano State that was stabbed. If you see the picture before this treatment, like like it's uh, it's I, an I, eye so I, you, I you saw cannot the, I saw the picture. you cannot even blow it enough, mm -hmm. and that's why we had to leave that out and take this one that she's responding to treatment. Like, how would you uh, stab a child because you feel her father is advising your husband?